and so I've seen it twice and I, and I filmed it and we all know you know most people have seen the interview but I was still on the edge of my seat so I think that's a real yeah. achievement to the writer and the director and it's a sort of you know the royalty of British acting which is just it's a pleasure to be a tiny part of yeah um doing their thing and uh yeah and I I, I just I found it really um, I found it kind of exciting and thrilling and you're sort of, you know what's coming in the interview but you still think, oh, he's not going to say that, is he? Uh, you, you, you've been on a run of these, Darren, right? You, you're just doing back to back. Oh man, you have no idea. Oh man, I just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a busy week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's okay. I mean, it's it's fun because I get to talk to so many awesome people. It's just cool. I love yeah. hearing the stories and stuff, and and great. And movies is my thing, so there's that. So oh, good, 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 good. So how yeah. long have you been doing this? uh since about 2017 wow yeah it's been a it's been a bit we just um i have i'm, I'm actually this is my uh fourth show i have four shows going on wow so my one show just went over the 100 episode mark which was kind of cool congratulations summer. yeah thank you it was, it was uh it was, you know i was like wow that's a lot and i'll be at, i'll be at 100 on this show probably by the end of the year most likely Okay. <clears throat> so, um, but you know, enough about me, man. I mean, <laughs> uh, okay, so before we jump in, um, for those of you who are listening, I'm Darren Jenkins. This is, uh, drop the mic and I am being joined by a wonderful, wonderful actor. Uh, one of Britain's most prolific young classical actors who, you can see right now, it dropped today on Netflix. You can see him playing Jason Stein, the Prince Andrew's former PR advisor on Netflix's newest film, Scoop, uh, which I watched. I got up at nine o'clock and watched it this morning. Wow. I was like. Fair play to you. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's such a good film, though, man. Right? It's. it's I yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. I, it, it, we got to see it. We kind of we went to um, a, a private cast screening, and then we went to the sort of premiere in um, in the in the West End. And I'd, so I've seen it twice, and I, and I filmed it. And we all know, you know, most people have seen the interview, but I was still on the edge of my seat. So I think that's a yeah. real achievement to the writer and the director. And it's a sort of you know the royalty of British acting, which is just it's a pleasure to be a tiny part of. Yeah. Um, doing their thing and uh yeah and I, I i just i found it really um i found it kind of exciting and thrilling and you're sort of you know what's coming in the interview but you still think oh he's not going to say that is he yeah and it kind of it's kind of edgy you see it's stuff and and somehow they've managed to make them through the director and i think the, all the, you know the great actors playing those lead roles they're all human beings which in an hour yeah. 40 minutes is kind of an achievement you know well, I'm going to I'm going to confess something here on this podcast. I hadn't seen the interview. Okay. At the, wow. before so I actually watched the interview first this morning and <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you couldn't write it. You couldn't write it. It's like I what struck me about um so okay. So I watched the I watched the interview and then I watched the film and uh what struck me was how cuz I, I don't i don't even know how to explain this it was such a it, it, the, the the his his interview was so um i don't even know like you know we're having challenges here in the US with our own yeah. master of deception Donald yes. Trump Mm -hmm. And it, it just felt like this dude was not, he, he just didn't understand the, 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 the scope of what he, what 
he had done. And what I found from the movie, which I, which you in, included, was how human all the like all the human stories around Absolutely. the telling of that story, which I yeah. found fascinating. Yeah, and how something like that comes comes to be, and 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 the reasons why people do what they do. Yeah, it, it, for for something like that to happen, that you, what I think is remarkable in what Rufus Saul does, he plays Andrew. I mean, he's you know you, you meet him in real life. His eyes twinkly, he's sort of you know one of the world's most handsome <laughs> men, and there he is, and you know with all the prosthetics and stuff, and it, it's kind of extraordinary transformation. But yeah. somehow, without try, he's not trying to apologize for him or his behavior, but you still he. As it, 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 what he shows is that everyone's a sort of product of their upbringing, the environment that they're, they're, they're born into, the the sense of entitlement that he captures is extraordinary. Why the people close to him, you know, what, are looking out for him. Why people do stuff out of loyalty. What right. drives other people. I think that what 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 drives different people in it is really clear, and 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 yeah. everyone's dr- being driven for different reasons towards this same place which is this interview right. which he and he thinks and and, and um, um amanda first the, the woman who's sort of yeah is, is, yeah that she they think it's gonna save him and get his life back and uh, yeah what's remarkable is that he still thinks he's nailed it you know right. at the end of it he thinks right. he's gone he's gone yeah. great he's he's, he's in that tub fully like uh, <laughs> yeah he's, he, he's nailed it he smashed it yeah. well, your character too uh, which I I thought was fascinating because and I said this till I was walking around the house trying to think about thinking about this movie today and I stopped and I go you know if they had just listened to him right if there's always one that, yeah, just there's listen always to someone him. like that in history so like uh, in Greek mythology the, the Cassandra figure Right. Someone's sort of screaming, like you know, the world's going to end. The world's going to end, and no one listens to them. Right. And so he's a, he's a, he's a he's a real dude, and he was very kind. He very kindly met up with me. Um, I went to sort of visit him. as very oh, swanky. So you did PR actually office. get to talk yeah, to him. Yeah, oh, I wow. did. Um, and he was very generous with his time, and I think he was pleased to be part of the film, um, even if it's not you know it's not not the central kind of story. But sure. it's a, it's an important aspect of it that there is someone there that recognizes that. Going on TV, being on Newsnight, it wasn't the play that he was thinking that they should make. And he had right. quite a clear idea that slowly, slowly, you, you just bring in journalists one by one. He spends time with them. And, and print media was the way he, you know, he was thinking of just sort of rebuilding his reputation. Right. Um, and he, they knew that they needed him, you know, and he was, he was this sort of young hotshot guy and they knew they needed him, but increasingly... As he was there, I think he felt that because he was the one saying television isn't the way you could stick with the plan. It's it's going to take a while, but because of what and I think what the film captures the the urgency once once um, Epstein had been arrested and right. that, that, that produced a new urgency um, and therefore he was kind of what he was saying was sidelined a bit and uh, so mm. he, he was saying don't do it don't do it and he got ignored and I, you know and I think that he probably was proved right. <laughs> In yeah. some ways, it wasn't it wasn't the thing to do. But yeah. there's always someone like that, you know. When big stuff goes down, there's always someone on the sidelines, sort of waving the flag and saying, "Just don't, don't do it, don't do it." And often they get ignored. Yeah, and, I, yeah. the the um, Amanda, who was played by Keely Hawes, who, well, by the way, I I was she was so good, like um, she's so great. Yeah, and you know she she. Um, her, her, the, the, this person that she is, she, I felt bad for her in a lot of, yeah. because she, 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 she could, she, it was weird. It was like weird. You almost felt sympathetic for him through her because she wanted so much to help him. Mm. And, you know, she, I think she truly believed that what she was trying to do was to Absolutely. kind of rebuild his person, yeah. this person. And like at the end, it just, uh, I mean, I, 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 I think they should do a, a documentary just on her afterwards because yeah. that has to have been very hard for her to have to deal with very afterwards. Hard. 
Yeah, and it, 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 the the sort of um, what she betrays so beautifully, the sort of the, the loyalty that comes with those people that we work for, that sometimes we don't always see um, the faults that, that that are kind of obvious to the rest of the world. We, we, we see the good in people, and and if we, if we, she's driven out of loyalty. She's probably worked for him, you know, for a number of years, right? And there's a level of care if yeah. you're someone's sort of personal assistant and that she and i think that she in a really sort of subtle beautiful way she sort of conveys that yeah love care and loyalty um so yeah and the, you know first day on set to get to do my scenes with her and rufus and because they're kind of screen legends and so much experience i remember what we had one of these sort of kind of and i was sort of thrust in there right. one of the takes keely's very generous but she you know she was had to sort of slightly guide me around <laughs> to make the camera move because it comes second nature to her because she's you know her body of work is extraordinary right. and i i was absolutely fine being sort of handled and moved in the right places you know i said to her you just you, you move me where i, where I need to go because <laughs> on your first day you know the nerves are there and you know she's just they're so those guys are like well trained athletes yeah. and um so i was happy you know just to ease myself in you and i said to her you move me where you need me to be how did you uh how so how did you in like how did you get the role how did how did you how did you end up on in- yeah it, 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 it was one of those um one of the, the uk's greatest casting directors um nina gold oh and, yes um, her, her associate martin where i mean they, they they've cast everything and um I remember speaking to my agent and and I sort of, you know, one of the things we said, it's like Nina Gold, you know, that's that's the person that I need to kind of get back on her radar. And, um, she, you know, just it was very uh, it was down to them, as is always the way they, they never often, they don't really get mentioned casting directors, right. but they're the ones that think of you and put you in front of a, a director. So nowadays, this is the way with acting, we, we uh, you put something on tape, first yep. you take yeah. it yourself Self tape, sure. so that's the way the industry's changed and actually it's one of those changes that i'm i'm i love really i love the fact yeah i, I i'd much rather especially first round i'd much rather tape by myself because you sort of you have a you're never happy with what you do right. but you have some level of quality control and often when you go in and meet first time round you, you bring in the journey of you know taking the, the subway you might have been late. It might have been, you know, you had trouble uh, getting your kids off to school that morning. And sometimes you bring that into the room. I never thought and about that. They, and you've got 10 minutes. And, and often when I'm taping myself, the first two takes that I do are, are kind of horrible. And that's what I would have done in the room. So when this script came up, I um, sometimes you get something you think, yeah, I could do something with this. I, get, I, I can see who this guy is. Sometimes you get stuff and you do your best, right. but you just know it's not quite right. you. Other times it's so you that you try too hard to show it's you. And then you get scripts like this. You think, I know what this guy's going to be like. I, know, I think I know what you want, what, what you might want. So I put it on tape. I knew they liked it. Um, and I got a uh, recall to go and meet the director in person, Philip Martin, who is, who's, uh, must be one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And on set was just one of those people. I think that it comes from the top. He, right. He's generous and gracious. And he's done so much of this kind of work around the royal family. He's done, you know, some of the best episodes. Yeah, of the, the crown. crown. I mean, you know. oh, so he was just he he, he he it brings out the best in you because it, and it was the same when I met him for the recall. Is that he he's there rooting for you. He nurtures you. He he drops in ideas and suggestions, and you never feel that you're being um, you just feel you're being guided and helped, and you can work together on something. So I met him, and then even then, after I met, I knew the recall had gone well, but there was a lot of moving parts trying to put this, the the cast together. They got, they had so many sort of um, such a wide, big cast and a a lot of, you know, great British actors involved. So it took quite a long time after the recall. I knew it had gone well. I knew they liked me, but the confirmation didn't come for like three months later. And it was about, yeah. So it ended up being about a week before the read through that they finally were able to say, yes, you've got the role. And then it's so to be able to go in to do that read through with, you know, like I say, some you know, royalty of uh, British actors and um, and then start filming about a week wow. after that was well, yeah, was a real gift. So it was, um, yeah, it, it was it, it was a real I the sort of thing that I've been wanting because I've done so right. much theatre and it was exactly the thing that I kind of wanted to step up and start doing the last couple of years. So I, I feel very grateful that I was yeah, part and you were, of that. I mean, like... Uh... 
Uh, you, so uh, on my other podcast, my co-host Chris Saunders, if he's listening, he'll he'll let, he'll smile at this. Um, he has this thing where he um, he's really uh, like a he loves the little nuances that people the actors will throw in, you know, like to kind of really um, bring like life to a certain moment and um you you know when when you're when you're telling them look i'm i'm not i'm not doing this i'm just not doing this i I was i was like i felt the palpable like frustration um which i was like wow okay that's two minutes that he's like i got two minutes on the screen bam i'm coming and hit it <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's funny as it's always the way with you know when you're when you filmed. There was other scenes that you film that that don't often the way with 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 a with a with a sort of role like this. The, what you it's great to read the writer's initial vision for that character because they it, it was in in the initial draft it was sort of more fleshed out, had more right. scenes, a longer build up to winning um, Prince Andrew's trust. So you have all that, but you kind of, when you're involved in a project, you watch the editing sure. process. You, so you see that first draft and then you, so you have all that that you've taped initially. So that's kind of all going yeah. on inside and then everything gets streamlined as they get yeah. to the heart of the story. So then you get this sort of shooting copy of the script, which you're like, all oh, right, so it's not as many scenes as a tape, but oh yeah, you read it in context and you think, yeah, this is the story about the women right. around these amazing right. women around Andrew. And so, what he's you understand that your role is really as a foil opposite Keely Hall's character, Amanda Thurston, and, and and just this sort of this figure that's saying that did sort of shine the light and go, Mm-mm, this is a bad <laughs> idea. Uh, and there was a couple of other scenes, you know, we had, we had an, another couple of nice scenes with Keely that again didn't make the edit, and then you see the film and you think, right, because there's a scene with Andrew and Amanda Thurston when they talk about Jake, uh, Jason says, let's just keep right. to the strategy. So in that one line you save yourself right. three minutes. So you don't need right. to show the scene. And and it, it's one of those, I think when you start out as an actor, you, you kind of take those things right. personally. But actually, as you get older, you recognise that your job is to serve right. the story. And it's not a comment on the quality of right. your work right. Right. or the scene. And, and you meet everyone else at, you know, at the screening and everyone's had, you know, everyone's had to lose right. some scenes. And it's for the sake of this overall story and the drive of the story. And you just need him to be this someone saying i yeah. told you so and that he wasn't able the guy poor guy wasn't able to do his job he right. was brought in he had a clear strategy and then he kind of got overruled and sidelined and um you can't work like that if you know if you're not going to listen to what i'm saying then then he had to go well at that level um, pr is such a hard job man i mean i wouldn't want to have been, have been that dude um like you know oh if i these guys and you think yeah yeah I, they're clearing up messes, you know, that you're basically, you're there, you're trying to, and what what was, I think what's interesting is that if they had kept him on, he would have been able to clear up yeah. the mess, yeah. the fallout better as well. But he wasn't, by that time, you know, uh, it's it sort of it's dramatized and, and simplified yeah. in the movie. But the, a lot of the time PR companies, you think that the mess politicians get themselves into, you know, all the kind of scandals that go on in the world. You're there clearing yeah. up. And, and, mess. It, it's a and his big. mess was not necessarily something you probably wanted to have cleaned up, to be honest. I mean, and, and, and as you think yeah. about it, what, um, the women, like his, what he was being accused of and what, the company he was keeping, that kind of thing. Um, and it ends up being women <laughs> that ultimately, yes, they, they, they are the ones also behind telling the story um f- even from amanda's point of view to a certain degree she has a hand in it and you know of you know telling that story setting up them yeah yeah absolutely it's 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 i think the film and i think what the film does brilliantly with those sort of phenomenal actors it, it's the, these incredible women very different women that, that that end up driving towards this interview and um the 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 sort of shock waves yeah. it sent through you know the royal family through and that that kind of reached across the world because I certainly I mean in America they kind of there's a there's a fascination with our yeah. royal family um, and I think it without overdoing that you get a glimpse of the sort of 
I don't think they knew quite what an impact that yeah. interview would have. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's 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 it was really interesting meeting him and and hearing his 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 story. So it's all that stuff. Like, you, you hear all this stuff, and you kind of and you and I got a feeling of you know physically we looked right. quite different. Um, mm. But you just I tried to just capture you want to kind of capture sure. the essence of someone and bring that into it. And, and that even if you, once you've spent that time with someone and you've done that, you, you've had that chat, you can't right. show it all in a couple of scenes, but hopefully it's, it's just in there and it will come through that, you know, this, I, I was, um, little things that you probably wouldn't, the, the nuance maybe wouldn't carry across in America, but the fact that I, I, I assumed he'd be from London and it was actually from the north of England, right. from Manchester. And so that was a really nice thing I could bring in. And he had these very particular glasses that, you know, I was adamant uh, that we've got, to, we've got to do that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's just, you want to kind of, I, and I saw him at the premiere, Jason, and he, he seems very happy with like what we did, what we ended up doing. Um, yeah, and like a fascinating guy, you know, that he ended up sort of... Um, working class background in, in, in the north of England. And then he ends up, he's sort of PR for some of, you know, for the royal family, for high level politicians, and now for a sort of big mm. firm in, in London. And, um, you know, he's clearly just got street yeah. smarts about yeah. him. You know, he, he gets the gig. He gets the How gig. How did you, uh, so I, again, I watched it this morning. I, so as mm. I'm watching it and I'm seeing um, Prince Andrew, who was played by Rufus Sewell, um, hmm. I'm watching this actor on screen. I'm just like, wow, this dude, whoever this is, is really good. And I did not know he was in prosthetics until I was like, I'm reading the cast list and I saw, I saw his name. I'm like, I didn't see him in this movie. What, what movie? What, what? And I had to roll and look yeah. at the picture. I'm like, holy smokes. He, yeah. He's so like, so for anybody who doesn't know Rufus Sewell, you, and that, yeah. that can't be many people, but um, what, like one of my favorite TV shows of all time is his show, The Man from the High and the High Castle. Oh I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. He is such a good actor. What was it like, like working yeah, with him? Yeah. Oh, what a pleasure! I, and you know, it's it's funny. It's like you can see, even at the mm. read through. The, the amount of time and research and hard that's the thing often when you get to kind of work with these great actors that talent is only like it's just one sm tiny part of why they're right. so successful it's the hard work and the graft they work hard they just they work yeah. really hard you know just just the judy dench is right. judy dench because she's judy she's dench. not she's just judy rolling dench in there or you know hard. out of bed yeah, and it's and, and it's it, <laughs> It's the it's everything that goes with it. It's it's the way that they uh, the generosity, the kind of um, the the generosity with the other cast members, the the the, the fact that everyone and the crew they kind of, they know them by first name basis. It, it, it's all that work ethic that every time you see um, someone like that work, and you're like, this is why you've got right. to where you are. Um, yeah. And, and so, yeah, so he'd done, he'd really, he'd, he'd been doing the, the work and the study hours of just studying yeah. that interview. Um, and, and, and you can tell also in a read through that, that uh, Rufus did a lot of theatre work before his, his TV yep. career really took off. And he, so his handle, the way he handles text, it's just with such skill um, and dexterity. And I, you, you kind of think that's probably a lot of that comes from, you, you know, you, the background that you've had in, in theatre. Um, you, but it's always, the, it's, it's always the same. It's like the people at the very top, they seem always seem the ones that are, are, are kind of the hardest working, the nicest to be around. And it's sometimes the people just right. beneath that, that might have a bit more of a chip in their shoulder and don't always treat other people with respect. So it's just like Philip Martin, the director, absolute gentleman, Rufus, Keeley, just delightful to work with it. And it was exactly the same when I got to do, um, uh, I, I played Laertes when Jude Law was playing Hamlet. Oh, um, really? Quite a long time ago. Coming up, yeah, this was back in 2008, I think, in, in the West End. And that, I mean, it was just, that was that blew me away, the way that he, he was exactly the same. He just, he was, he worked harder than anyone he made sure he came to everyone's dressing room before every sh the show wow. every night to check in with them. He'd, you know, take us all out to, to uh, when we'd finished the week of performances and, you know, 
get us all drinks and a meal. You know, it's that kind of level of care, knew everyone's name. And, and that that's the stuff that I've really tried to learn from is that when if I've been leading the company in a theatre show or something is it's that you know even if I might not be the most sociable or something that I'd always try and treat people with respect know them by name uh, and lead by example through wow. like hard work and that's what people like Rufus and you know yeah do. Um, since you've done you've done theatre and now you're you know obviously you're doing television um, what what do you uh, think like what's the what are the differences when it comes to the kind of pressure be, of performing in front of a live audience versus in front of a camera mm. i sort of thought i i used to think they were more different and and and, in, and they are different in some ways television and and um screen work and then theater but it's it's um there's something about theater that you're having to you're kind of having to recreate uh, you know 100 performances but the audience are coming and they need to feel that they're they're seeing it mm. for the first time that you've never said those words before and there's a skill in that of, of, of pretending that you're new minting the words for the first time and what i love about filming and and, and it's quite addictive is it's the sort of immediacy of the pressure is that you'd be waiting around and waiting around and then suddenly you're on and you've got about five or six different technical things. You've got to reach a certain point at a certain time. You've got to turn. The camera might move. So you've got to shift your position. And I love those sort of um, boundaries and uh, being given to you and the, the adrenaline rush of suddenly being on. So, it's, I mean, what's what's been interesting, Darren, is that over the last few years, I think during, during lockdown and homeschooling, is um, understanding, you know, seeing in my my. Uh, spending that time with my daughters and then I you know I, I kind of was like I think you might have ADHD <laughs> and then I kind of found out about really it. I definitely got ADHD so we both got diagnosed and so now I really understand why in some ways acting when you're kind of um it's probably the worst possible profession for yeah, someone with probably. ADHD because you're dependent on external right. validation it's very hard to get motivated yourself but but that, so um your you take criticism you can take yeah. it quite badly <laughs> but at the same time you the, the the sort of dopamine hit yeah. that you get from being yeah. on stage to an audience um and compare and same when when the camera's rolling and it's like action it, it I, I love i if i know what i'm doing and i feel confident in it i love that mm. feeling of suddenly being on um, and, and and i can see now it's it's a definitely it's a dopamine hit and all the motivation and the pressure it's coming from outside. You're not having to generate it yourself. And that's as I'm understanding more about ADHD. It's it's about a deficit of motivation. And when you get given that from the outside, it that's when you kind of switch on. So it's a rush. It's it's like I before becoming an actor, I, I played drums, and it was the same sort. I played oh. jazz drums, and the same thing. That sort of thrilling feeling when something's just cooking right. and you're playing and it's a it's a thrill. It's a drug and it's addictive. And that you get that on stage when when you're in a show and that you know you're doing yep. a good job and you're giving the audience an amazing time and you're you, um you're entertaining yep. people and yeah there's definitely a thrill that comes from when the camera's rolling and you have to hit something um and i you know sort of have to learn not i've, I've always put a lot of pressure on myself and i'm sort of learning not to be hard on, as hard on myself it's amazing how much you carry on learning you know i'm oh, into yeah. my 40s now yeah. I've been doing it 20 years and I'm just learning all the time. It's, um, it's a lot like that for comedians as well. For me, like as a, um, when you're on, um, you know, when you're doing either live improv or, or if you're doing a stand up yeah. com comedy, uh, it is like, it's, it's, um, one of the scariest things you can possibly want to do. Yeah. But at the same time, when you've, after you've done it, man, you just like want to get back up oh. there again. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it, there's that feeling, there's a feeling like, I, I guess, if, you know, maybe if you're if, as a stand up, if you're, um, you know, you're trialing some yeah. new material for the first time, then the same way you, you do that first preview, it's the first time you share the story with the world, right? And you, you're running around like, you know, brainless chickens <laughs> backstage, you have no idea where you're going, people are shoving you on, but it's such a, thr you're never that, that level of focus and attention. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's totally and you're kind of thinking how am i ever how's this ever going to feel natural and then like a few weeks later the play plays yeah. itself 
you know you just, in the same way you're set like you know it and then what, you're so comfortable probably in what you're doing that then you can really react to what the audience are bringing yeah. that night and you can play off that because everything else just exists you've got this framework that's there um but you, you it is those there's that the level of fear you kind of think that the, the payoff has to be yeah. worth it that you put yourself through that level of kind of you know hair of the you know seat of the pants or whatever the, you know phrase and you're just out there and you're hitting and hoping and and you get through it and you think wow it happened yeah. you know and you can't that afternoon you have no idea how it's going to happen and it does um but that's the, the last i did uh, the the last 2022 i did sort of three really interesting theater shows back to back and then last year i thought i'm going to just try and stay available i'm not going to say yes to the theater so i can end up you know, doing these TV projects. So it was, it, I, I, I'm now feeling having not done theatre for a year, like I could go back and do some, you know, if, if the right thing came along, but I, I really needed to take some time away from it mm. last year. Uh, so you said you are, were a jump drummer before you became an actor. How did, yeah. so how did that, how, like, what was the, <laughs> what's the transition what the, there? Yeah. I know it's really it was it was one of those things that um I, you know I hope my my you know very lucky incredibly supportive parents and um but I think that I at, at, back at the time when I was a kid so both I've got two incredibly talented uh, brothers who were both musicians and they carried on doing it um and I remember at the time when I was eighteen I I, I came to London to do a history degree. And when I was in London, I really wanted to be in London so I could carry, you know, because I was gigging and, you know, I was, I was, as a teenager, I was drumming all over the place. So I, I'd managed, I did this history degree, but I was uh, playing sort of Ronnie Scott's jazz club and um, jazz cafe and all the jazz clubs around London on the weekends and, and still managed to do my history degree. And then it was just at university that I ended up getting involved a little bit with the theatre department as well. And I hadn't really done much acting since I was a kid and it sort of gone off the radar for the drumming. But I, I, I kind of, was, it was, I quite enjoyed it and I was quite good at it. And then I remember finishing um, drums, uh, finishing my history degree. I knew I wasn't going to be a historian. I thought I was going <laughs> to be a drummer, but I auditioned, someone said I should audition to drum school. And I auditioned to a great school called Lambda on the off chance, just went on their last sort of weekend uh -huh. of auditions to see what happened and they gave they offered me wow. the place and so then i thought and then i still didn't know if i could go and then they offered me a scholarship so my mind was kind of made up and so <laughs> i went there and studied acting for two years but i still didn't know if i was going to be an actor i still thought i was going to yeah. be a drummer and then i got a great agent and i still didn't know <laughs> if i was going to be an actor so my first couple of years out i ended up i was sort of doing you know weddings and stuff on the weekend that was how I paid my way and then increasingly over time I was getting more acting work and I couldn't make the sort of band rehearsals right. anymore and I just sort of let it it just kind of disappeared it sort of it wasn't sudden it was sort of, it, 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 it slowly disappeared and I remember I don't know if you've got siblings yeah. Darren but I remember it it was my way of probably choosing I wanted to do my own thing I know exactly you what know, you mean I think yeah do you know that feeling yeah, I sort of probably that it's being a middle child, you want to find your own path in life. And I think that there was probably a moment that it, even if it was subconscious, that I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that because that's that would be my thing. And I've just I'm very fortunate that I've been able to make a career out of it. And um, so are your siblings uh, in the music? You know, yeah. Music? Yeah, they're both both. Uh, in the music okay. Business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So me doing drama, like me going becoming an actor, I think it was my way of being. Sort of saying, yeah, I'm going to be my own person. You know, you're kind of middle child syndrome, right? Hey, trust me, it happens for the thing. youngest child too. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Does it? I'm the, the youngest. Are you the younger? My brother, okay. um, my brother, when we were young, he's he's an artist, and he would he so he drew comic books for like Marvel and DC and all these you know the big comic book companies here. Wow. And I kind of was through. I wanted to be an actor, but my father. Did not really? want okay. me to be an actor. He he was like, nope. Yeah. He's like, you can do something art related that's business related. So he tried to force me down the same path my brother was going, which was from the uh, comic book art into like advertising, business advertising. And mm -hmm. I hated, I hated it, I hated it. And the same. So I kind of did the same thing you did, where I just went into the film. I was once I got old enough to say make my own choices. 
I was like, I, I just want to, I want to be a, an actor, man. I, I just mm. like, I, I don't want to be identified as, you know, Keith's little brother who does the same thing I do, you know? Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be so-and-so's brother. You right. want to be your own person. And I think, and I'm really glad that I, I did, but it's, it's, it's interesting that there's some things that you can take agency yeah. of in your life. That, that that choice but even then you know it, in the creative industries you're so much at the mercy of other people's yeah. decision making and 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 it's like the industry will tell you what you're yeah. good at and what they want want to see you do so and then you kind of get caught on a path and then it's it's your just you have to try and make the decision to maybe move and do something else so when i i'd been out a few years and then i um so I, I, I've been fortunate enough to work with like some of the greatest directors, that, you know, uh, in in theatre, and and they've totally I owe them so much for not only just giving me the job, but much more teaching me about stuff. So it was two thousand and seven. Um, I worked with a guy called Declan Donnellan, who runs a company called Tube mm. by Jowl, um, and, and it, he cast me. I'm nowhere sort of cast me as the lead in a Troilus wow. and Cressida, which was then touring around Europe and. So I'd be suddenly up from doing smaller part. I was suddenly a lead role in a Shakespeare, and I I, I hadn't wanted mm. to do Shakespeare, but that he saw something in me, and because the way he talks about, um, he understands human beings so well. It was like having a life oh, coach wow. as well as a director. Yeah, he just understands kind of how messed up we are, <laughs> and he and he shone a light on Shakespeare that made me that something I thought was really sort of dull and boring. Um, it completely opened my eyes to to this this that we've been we kind of have the wrong kind of reverence for him. We we, we obsess over his language, and we don't we sort of forget that he's a playwright. Right. That he writes these great words, but it's but like in any play, it's what those words, it's the characters and story that they sh- you know give you a, a window into. That's what's so right. so crazy and so in- remarkable. And he kind of taught me that what people the way there's a sort of received way that people think play should be, but actually for him, moments that assumed people assumed were funny were actually really darkly tragic, and moments that you thought were tragic were actually hilarious. And so having done that job for him, I then went into, um, I got to work with the great director, Michael Grand, as you two, um, at this Donmar season in the West End, so I got to play Sebastian in Twelfth mm. Night, and then I got to play Laertes, Jude Law's Hamlet, and so suddenly I was on this this Shakespeare path, which wow. I hadn't planned. Um, and it was like that. It was telling the industry was yeah. telling me. And actually, I was quite good at it. I, I managed to find a way to make Shakespeare sound quite natural. And because of the stuff I'd done with the work that I'd done with my great mentor, Declan, it, I, I was able to hopefully bring this sort of freshness to it. And then I ended up at the Royal Shakespeare for wow. years playing lead roles you know you got to play king john and orlando and as you like it and bertram and all's well that ends well and yeah you know brutus and julius wow. caesar and i got to for the great director trevor nunn i played henry the sixth in the wars of the roses and um got to open the new indoor theater the globe doing the duchess of malfi so i was on this path that i hadn't set out to do i'd never imagined i'd be a shakespeare kind of mm. actor um but it's like that's what people see you doing and so oh you're good at that so you can carry on so i think since 2017 i ended up doing um that was the one when i did julius caesar and then after that i thought i've got to make some changes and so it was at that point it hadn't been my, my happiest right. experience and it, doing a hundred shows it was we were all kind of like togas and sandals <laughs> and it felt a bit of a kind of like cosplay yeah. romans and it wasn't a lot of the shakes were done quite modern dress and crazy and and but it got me to like really take a look and think I need to sort my health out. I, I, I finally had time. I discovered I had Crohn's oh. disease. So I'd been doing eight shows a week for 10 years, feeling oh. rough. And I'd never have time to, I'd never had time to get diagnosed. Um, so I found that out. And then I, I went to therapy for the oh, first time in my life. Yeah. And, and a lot, you know, it, it was like a real, and so I haven't done any Shakespeare since 2017, but I've got a lot of other stuff sorted. But it was, it was the time when I was like, I need to make a choice. I need to say no to this. I need to do some other stuff. Um, so that's the only agency you can have because most of the time, even if you do great tapes or great auditions, it's still down to someone else going, that's how I, I see the role. And 
you know, there's only th- there's certain things you have to hold on to that you have control, which is why it comes back to what I think I was saying yeah. about taping, that I feel like I've got some control over that in a way that I don't, I feel a bit out of control when you just turn up into a room for 10 minutes and, and then it's different when you get to meet the director for the recall, you, uh, you know, uh, second round. So um, are there roles that you are like interested in kind of pursuing uh, now, like um, particularly? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sort of part of, there's a, there's a few Shakespeare's I think I'm too old to do now. I always thought I'd nail oh. Romeo. Uh, but um you know leonardo dicaprio sort of properly <laughs> think here's one you know i think that's kind of unbeatable that film but i always would love to i'd love to have played that i would have loved to have played henry the fourth um uh prince Hal um in henry the fourth but i'm getting a bit old for those now so there's in terms of shakespeare there's not there's not massive there's not roles that right now i'm desperate to play but in terms of the filming and stuff I've done, um, I'm now, I've done lots of nice guest yep. lead spots for different things. I've got a nice thing that's going to come out next year for Disney Plus, And there's another Netflix show that I just finished filming that will come out later in the year. But I really want to be, I want to be the sort of lead role on a, in a series now. I want to, the way I've led a company in theatre, I want to be able to do that. I want to, I, I, the, re, the building a character, being day after day, the repetition of it. It's such, like I say, it's such a drug filming. It's so sort of um, intoxicating. Mm. Uh, but that's that's the thing. So it's not really a particular part, but I just, I'd like to be a sort of regular in a series or you know, kind of lead role in a in a movie. And I think I've got the the experience and the chops to do it now. Whereas I think. Even though I've been doing the 20 years, it's only the last few years I've really been doing a lot of telly, so I feel much more right. ready to do it now than I think I would have done five well, years I ago. Well, I feel like you could, I could see you doing um, like a lead role in like maybe a police procedural or 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 sci-fi drama. I love a good sci-fi drama. Love to. Yeah, yeah, you see, I, yeah, I might, you know, my, 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 uh, my yes, kids would like that for sure. I've got two beautiful daughters as well, and I think they'd enjoy that a lot. It's, again, it's one of those things. It's like I don't. Um, I you sort of learn as you go. I came out to America, um, and you know, met a whole bunch of people. This was in twenty nineteen, I think twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen, and I didn't have. When they ask you, who do you see yourself? Oh. What what kind of actor are you like? And they want to know because they haven't really seen your work. And I, and I just, I didn't have, I gave such willy answers of like, I'm, you know, I can do anything. I, you need to, and I, I learned that I should have just given right. a much clearer yeah. answer of the lane of, um, uh, you know, like as someone I admire at the moment, I, I'm not even like remotely kind of comparing myself to him. I think it's just phenomenal. There's a show, The oh, Bear. Oh yeah, The Bear, the sure. Bear? Yeah, so that guy, Jeremy Allen White, you know, I think that his energy on stage, I think, I, you know, I've got, I I, I'd love to be able to see do that. like that. I definitely see that. Um, I, I mean, if, I think if anything, if only, um, maybe it's just the curly hair that, you know, that I, but I just think he's phenomenal. And, and that there's, you know, there's there's a load of sort of peers that I kind of admire. But I kind of, I think that if I was to do it again, I'd probably give a, be able to give a clearer answer of the kind of lane I'd like to do. Is that I'd always, I think the parts I do, what's funny, I often end up, dying in things it's quite a tragedy maybe i've got a tragedy about me so yeah living so a character that lives in this one i don't you know in this in this movie without it's not a spoiler right. but i don't die but i think it's uh i, I think I, I, a vulnerability and an edge and i think that's what i bring to roles that's what that's my sort of calling card that's the thing that i have that comes naturally so like even if like a character like this who has a sort right. of confidence I think underneath it, that I think that's the thing that I'll always have going on is a bit of vulnerability and a bit of you know um, underneath even it, the swagger. Hmm. Uh, there used to be a there was a show on. Um, there used to be it was a sci-fi show. It uh, was on in two thousand eight called Fringe, and um, oh, one of the that. the main characters was played by this guy, um, uh, Kirk Acevedo. His name is Agent Charlie what? Francis, and he was the partner to the main character on on the show. And um, I I tell people this a lot. I I think those characters 
even though they're not what you'd call the main character, but they're on the show every week and they're I I think they're I think they're very important to the um lifeblood and of of the show. And um I, I I like guys like that. I like character actors. I like guy like like <laughs> char- yeah. Act, that's one of the reasons why I like Rufus because whenever you see him on screen, oh. you, you know something good is about to happen. Like th- th- there's never a doubt. There's always going to be something good. And um, yeah, I, I I think like you should like you should you like just hearing your story. I think you mm. you have what's like this thing that a lot of actors have where um there's an energy about you that just attracts good projects and kind of levels you up each time you go along and I think you don't you don't don't worry I think you're going to be where you're supposed to be No you know I, that's, thank you Darren I know I I feel like um it's always relative, isn't it? I feel incredibly lucky that I've, I've I've had a I've had a really I think that you know I'm not a I'm certainly not right. a household name you know by any means, but I feel like I've got hopefully like a level of respect certainly within the yep. theatre community in, in in the UK from the work I've done and the people that have seen me, and I feel very fortunate that in this industry I've been able to make a, a nice living and I can you know can support two beautiful girls and. Um, that that it, it, but it's always it's always relative, isn't it? I I don't want to right. lose the oh, ambition. Yeah. You got to keep that. There's more. There's more you want to do, and you're not just settling for. Uh, and, you know, and I know that you know I'm like, I'm, I'm capable of doing it. I'm capable of doing more. But I think it's you've got to at the same time you've got to be really grateful that I'm so grateful to have appeared in this movie. Um, at a time it's been it's been a sort of tricky few years for our yeah. industry. You know, I'm sure you've been meeting loads of people. So you got you know you had the pandemic we were getting back on our feet and then we had the strikes yeah. last year which kind of messed everything up and that it's a it, it, i don't know what's going on in america right now but certainly in the uk people are sort of catching up with the stuff that yeah. stopped filming same here last year so that's a knock-on effect so there's a whole bunch of people that that aren't you know that, that should be working yep. that aren't working and there's more and more great actors that are available yep. so people are spoiled for choice yeah. so you kind of think it's a tricky time for our industry and if, if i'm able to keep working that's great and you kind of hope that you know it like you say it will look after itself if you keep on um doing good work treating yes. people with respect um you know and that that people will hopefully want to work with you again it's like it's funny now looking back at some of the theater jobs i did 10 years ago or so and that I don't think I've ever been difficult, but I'd always be quite, uh, I could get quite fixated on certain things because I always wanted the best. But now I understand right. it probably as like the ADHD and, and I, like since therapy, I think I've been a joy to direct. So I'd never, I, I, I don't, I'm like, I'd never question anything, you know, I, I, you know, in this, in the way I, I might have right. in the past, might have held on to something. But I think now it's just not taking direction personally knowing that you're there helping each other, that it's a kind of dialogue and it's not a criticism. Right. Being able to take criticism is like, those Those are the things you learn. So, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I go around the houses, but it's just, I feel lucky to be, that I've, I've been working this year and um, I'm really, you know, grateful to be part of this, well, this project. You know, you, you're proof positive that part of the, part of being an actor, um, people, I think people like uh, don't realize is, Self care is is self care. Oh, my. And it's it's probably more it's important totally, than right? anything else you're going to do. Most likely, I know because it can it can it could swallow you up. And you know you 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 watch friends that yeah. you've trained with that have, have yeah. given it up, and uh, and you realize that it's not because of and it's not down to talent. It's yeah. down to luck. You know that you're that I'm still in the game, twenty years on. It, the, Talent's only a small part of it. It's like perseverance, hard work, and 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 luck. And you need a lot of that. And that, that it, it, if without that, it can really, it can swallow you up. Back to you, you know, you're constantly having people reject you. And if you've got rejection sensitivity, yeah. you know, it's, it's a not like I say, it's yeah. a hard choice. But it, at the same time, the, but on the flip side, for all those rejections, there's nothing. When you get offered something, that first ten minutes of like the thrill the buzz when you're like it's a yes 
and then it then it disappears quite quickly and then it goes straight back to the self-doubt of like will i actually right. be able to do it <laughs> yeah you know yeah it's quite a short bit it's a short-lived high but then you then then this other thing kicks in and like the self-doubt you right. know, there's always this part of you watching yourself right. from the audience you're on stage or can i do it will i be good right. enough you know and it, that does and then it's it's finding the way to deal with that like you say is that it's just you know on a slightly different note but it, it, in it one of the things actually about self-care is that if you can this is what my great mentor Declan Donlan who I was mentioning earlier taught me is that if you put all your attention when you're doing a scene on stage or when you're doing your scene in on when you're filming because there's always that little third eye watching you criticizing yeah. you and, and the best way to shut that out is to all, just put all your attention on the other person you're in the scene with. It sounds obvious, but it's like, what do they need to hear? What am I doing to them? So you take all the attention wow. off yourself and all the attention onto how are these words landing with them? Is this working? Do I need to try something else? Um, and then it does, It you have to keep reminding yourself, but that the sort of level of like beating yourself up and self-hatred and what you were talking about self-care but in a funny way the best way to bring yourself out of that when you're actually working is to really just think about the other person you're on you're, you're doing your scene with and the same think of thinking about the audience think about the person mm. your scene partner and looking looking out for them and if you're looking out for them looking at then they're looking out for you and that's when like the scene comes alive yeah. you know and it's sort of a way of taking some of that pressure away from yourself oh, man dude you, i mean there's that's a that's a that is i mean every actor i think even not even just actors i think anyone who is um in the public performance eye versus whether it's a musician or a singer or an actor or a comedian anywhere where judgment <laughs> is a prevalent thing and that's you know that's every day and it could be your look it could be yeah. your 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 sound it could be anytime you have to be go undergo constant judgment that has got to be mm -hmm. a very difficult thing to kind of deal with and for anyone who doesn't think they shouldn't like i think therapy th therapy to me when someone says you have you, you, I, I'm going to therapy. It, it should be fist bumps. It should be, you know, high fives. Absolutely. It should be, that's, that's awesome. You know, because oh man, that is, that is, there, there is nothing wrong with it. And if anything is yeah. wrong, my with wife, it, you're not you, going. And my wife, yeah, completely, man. And my, my wife, Amelia C is amazing film writer, um, theater director, um, incredible woman and she, she knew I needed therapy for years and was just really kind of decent and patient and she knew there'd be a time when I'd right, be ready right. for it and she knew um but you're right it takes like I, I, I'd sort of I probably dismissed it for far too long and but and she knew how much I needed it and and I it totally I mean until you've gone through it you don't realize quite how transformative yeah. it can be and and what a knock-on effect like I was mentioning about the Crohn's disease, but I was like, I was living in fight or flight mode all uh, the time. So I was just at such, you know, I saw someone the other day who I'd sort of trained at drama school with and he said, why well, you've kind of calmed down a bit, man. Like you were quite, and I didn't realize at the time, but you're flooding your gut with adrenaline. Mm. And so, you, you, you know, I was the biggest, the biggest thing that's helped me deal with that kind of with Crohn's was, is, is like just not being yeah. stressed. That that was the biggest thing, and that was down to therapy. So so it's all the, this sort of knock on effect. It's not only about your mental health, but my physical yes, health yes. is so much better. Is that too? Yeah. Um, and, and you know, it, it, like you say, it's it, it's can for, for 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 people that are performing, you're 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 putting yourself yeah. out there for criticism, but at the same time, you're probably looking for approval in some way as well. You know, it's like this it's this weird mix that you kind of. As painful as one is, as we've already, it's, it's like these these opposites that we live for, and we don't really understand right. the rejection without the the kind of being accept without the acceptance. In the same way, we don't appreciate the acceptance without having some knockbacks right. along the way, you know. Um, but it definitely, you know, for those people that haven't tried it, um, yeah, a total game changer. Mm. And I think like my kids, their favorite person in the world is my therapist. You know, since I've gone to that, I've been like way more steady you know like i've always been a good dad but just like they it's not un, 
a much more kind of that's amazing um yeah yeah man yeah definitely it's what's a um what's one piece of advice you would you would give to um young actors who are trying to follow in your footsteps it's uh it's really interesting because i i kind of i i um, I love going to talk, especially my old drama school, Lambda. I go and talk uh, and talk Shakespeare to them because I was, um, uh, it was like an, an evangelical conversion for me because I hated it. It was boring. And then I was like, oh man, this is really fun. When you finally perform it in front of an audience and you're like, they, you can see why people right. love it so much. But what, I get asked that kind of, and I think the first one is like, whatever I tell young actors, you need they need to go and make the mistakes for themselves you know i can give all the best advice in the world but it's like this you know my 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 eldest kid i remember when she was two you know she said be careful right. on the stairs right. be careful on the stairs right. be careful on the stairs and one time she tried to dance down the stairs and she fell down she and then since then, the stairs. she's been careful yeah. on the stairs so like for all the advice in the world i could give it first like you need to go and you need to go and mess up some auditions you need to kind of you know do a lot of the right that's how you'll learn but having said that you know that, that's the I, I i sort of treating people with respect in the building whatever building you're in everyone's there trying to like do their best so if someone's trying to quick change your costume at the side of the stage it doesn't matter this is what i've learned now like in the scheme of things it doesn't matter if you know there's like three people know what you're meant to be wearing you the director right. and the designer a thousand people in the audience they couldn't care less you know as long as you're not sort of naked you're fine so just treat people with respect, say please, say yeah. thank you. Um, because those things go, you know, they, it gets around. There's two artistic directors at the end of every season in the theatre. They go to the hair, wigs, makeup department. And we're like, who, who, was, who were the divas and oh, who was wow. nice? And, and, and they, it, those things would get noted. And, and you have to be super, super, super talented if you're, if you're not going to yeah, be nice to true. people, you know, to get up. Um, so and it's the same when you're on a film set it's like everyone's there they want it to be the best then those people the people running to get you cups of teas and coffees it's just like no learn their name so please and thank you work hard um but yeah it, it's like i think the biggest bit of advice is just knowing that you're you're gonna have to, whatever people tell you i i could i've been doing this 20 years and i still go to auditions and can't remember my name you know you it, it's like you get you sit in there for whatever reason you sort of suddenly feel you just some days you feel comfortable yeah. some days you don't you know some days you feel try but it's like it's you have to kind of go through that a few times before you learn it and 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 there's no when something's right it's yeah. right you know I think that's the thing I get sent something and it's like if you're right for the part you're then you're right for the part and often it's not it's not a, you we want to have control. This is the other thing I think I've, I've learned as a control freak. We want to have control. We want to think when we don't get a part, we messed up the yeah. audition. We probably nailed the audition. It's just someone right. was more right, right for that role than you are. It, we want to feel that it was something we could right. do differently. And unless you were rude to people in the room or, you know, those things you can control of learning your lines and, and, and making strong choices, all of that stuff's fine. But just knowing that it's not your fault if, if you don't get a part, it, it's quite a relief and a relief, you know, because actually when I've sat the other side of the table casting, you see great people and for whatever reason, they may not be right for something and it's not because right. of their talent. And so just, yeah, so that's why I'd say just you, the parts you don't get, it's probably nothing to do with you or your talent. It's just someone's more right for it, you know, and when it is your turn, it'll and, be your turn. And what you, something you said up front, which was about the uh, self, self, uh, self-taping, which yeah, is Get on. Love that, it. you know, in when you go to on a live audition, you you bring things with you off the sub, you know, subway transit. Yeah. Well, the same thing happens to the people who are sitting there listening to you as well. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't, con- sure. you can't, uh, uh, you know, adjust for that. You don't know what's going on in that person's exactly. life. And, you know, yep. so. You don't know who's just been right. in the room before you. Uh, that's what I mean. I think there's something more democratic about taping is that they that you're not being judged right. on the chat you know right. small talk you're being judged purely on like this is how i see the character based on the advice that you've given me here it is and if it's if it if it chimes with you great if it doesn't then okay but i'd, I'd much rather that it, 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 it's there's something fairer to me that it's not about the kind of immediate because often 
I've booked jobs just yeah. from tapes. Um, but sometimes you, you, it's like your first round and then you meet the director, but then they, you know that they already see you, they can see you in right. that role. And then so when you, you, you feel like when you go in to meet them personally, it's on a different level. But I just think, I think there's, we, I mean, I've booked gigs um, when my wife and I, my wife kind of taping with me, we've been trying to get the kids out the door to go on holiday. Um, I did this show called Strike Back and playing like a, um, a Russian hitman. And I remember getting, it's like, oh man, they're just going to get a Russian. You know, it's like, I can't do this. And so because we're packing bags, we're trying to get kids out. And, you know, you've only got like two takes and you, it's like, this is crazy. But because of that, the kind of carelessness and the carefree attitude, you end up, you know, I booked it, you know, and no one, they don't see. Um, like nowadays I go to a, you know, I go to a studio and do it. Um, so I don't have to bother my wife. The last thing she needs at the end of the day is me sort of messing around with lights, trying to do a 20th take, you know, it's like, that one's fine. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I, a lot of actors don't love it. They like being in the room, but it's, you know, it's, it's, for me, it's just, there's something pure about just being judged on your, this is how I see the part. So I, I just tell the actor young to embrace that because that's, it's actually more, you're going to, you have more chance of being seen for something now with taping because it's cheaper. You know, they can see more people rather than booking a room. So just embrace it, do your best thing, send it in and um, know that it's watched. They're not going to waste your time asking you to tape without yeah. watching it you know so just don't feel yeah someone's gonna see well it, okay? uh before we go i, I was gonna ask you this real quick yeah in, any any please any any um thoughts towards writing or directing or producing down the road well uh we've, i've sort of i've tried my hand at producing a bit um uh we, my wife and i kind of have a have a theater company and it's quite a nice way of working as producer mm. and director Rather than, you know, I think that I, I, I'd like to think I'd be different now. But I remember when my wife sort of directed me early on, I, you know, we ended up in a couple of shows together. But you don't want to sort of read the subtext of like, can you move stage left? Is like, why didn't you do the washing up last <laughs> night? So actually, director yeah. producer is quite a nice way of um, working together. Writing, it's, it's one of those things that I, I so great writing is so yes, difficult is. to do writing great dialogue it takes such a skill and i don't i don't feel like i've got anything to say or i think again with if, if someone told me i had to write a script i'd probably be able to do it because it would give me that external motivation right. that i'd need with my adhd but i can't these people that can just sit and write i just find incredibly yeah. impressive um directing i kind of enjoy i quite like working with students on on on, on, on stuff but yeah it's not I think producing is probably the most likely that I'd go back to. I'd love to be able to like produce on, on films one day, you know, um, I think that I'd love, I love the kind of idea of all aspects of it, bringing it together. But yeah, there's, um, it's not, a, yeah, not immediately, but I think one day I'd go back to producing for sure. What, what's next for you? What, uh, anything else? Uh, I, I, I've just, so I, like, I've, like I said, I've filmed a, um, a series of Disney that will come out next year. And then I've did this other Netflix things coming out later in the year, but I don't know. I've got no, um, acting work lined up, but as is always the way something will come in and you hope you book it. Um, I'm going to take my kids and my, but my, my other half, we're going to go away on nice. holiday tomorrow. So for, for a nice week in Spain. So recharge a bit. Um, that's all that matters. And I think that's really, you know, it's a, it's a great having kids, having a family that it really helps you realize that, you know, ultimately it's great that this is my profession, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you get a line wrong. It doesn't matter if something like, you know, it, there's more important things in life and that's really helped sort of, I think, level Amen. me out a bit. Amen to, to that. Well, you yeah. can, you can go on vacation your, your 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 show scoop is out so you can kind of sit back and enjoy yep. that that the response which i think is going to be very warm and welcoming and and you know come back recharged and see what comes next you know yeah and go again yeah and go again exactly i Thanks, really Darren. i appreciate you taking the time to talk to me is Oh man, thank you. It's been really um, nice talking to you. Where can can people follow you on on social media anyway? Yeah, I'm I'm the worst social media person <laughs> ever. I I sort of very rarely, you know, I yeah, I kind of feel like I don't really have much to add. Like uh, I think people probably hear enough of my. It's okay. It's the the one less thing you yeah. have to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, I yeah I I'm uh my name so it's Waldman um 
So W A L D M A two N's N N Alex Waldman at Waldman Alex is like my Twitter and my well, it's not Twitter anymore. X and yeah. Instagram, but I'm not on That's it okay. so much. Um, but there's yeah. nothing to see. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, everyone else is saying it. Well, you know, yeah, I, yeah. Everyone's saying it. Yeah. Saying it loud. Well, I appreciate me, so. you taking the time and talking to me, and uh, enjoy your vacation with your family. Thank you, Darren. Thank you and so much, man. Congratulations really on, the, on, on the show. It's, it's amazing. Thank you. I hope people enjoy it. I think it's a, it's a fun watch, hour 40 minutes. And um, even if you think you know the interview, there'll be stuff that you know, I think people will still enjoy. Great. Yeah. Uh, and everybody, please make sure you like and follow me on the Darren Jenkins, where you can find the podcast. Drop the mic. We'll, we'll be out next week. Um, this will actually be, be out sooner because I think we're going to drop this special for uh, the Netflix show. So, oh, wow. yeah. Great. So I'll let you know when that when it drops. Um, but you know, don't worry. You go on vacation, relax, enjoy yourself. Okay. All right, thanks, Darren. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks. thanks. Well, nice. great to see you. Thank you.